coming up, Behavioural Economics, The Snob Effect, Part 2. Are you placing your bank balance in harm's way because you are simply not thinking sufficiently hard about the next car that you might buy? I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Aussie new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Behavioural Economics 101. The snob effect is where price and perception strap on their wonder bra in an attempt to convince you that the product underlying the transaction is far more stacked than it really is. Part one of my report on that is there, I think, on a desktop anyway, on a mobile or a tablet, Christ knows. And he's dead. In 25 years of testing cars and reporting about them and the industry that makes them, in other words, 25 years of wasting my life, I think I've divorced myself from the snob effect. But I remember how profound it once was the first time I drove a Porsche, Ferrari, AMG this, M Performance that. I was gagging for it. But here's the thing, right? It was sex with a supermodel syndrome every time. The RAA of which is, the idea of sex with a supermodel is better than the actual sex with the actual supermodel. It's not that sex with a supermodel is bad. And I'm inferring this, supermodels who would like to assist me with the conclusion of my experiment form an orderly cue, and we will detain ourselves with that at your leisure. The problem is that you expect this process to be twice as good as the reality really is, and this is exactly what it's like to drive one of these cars that you will probably never be able to afford. Reviewers gush about them, but that's the reality. The expectation is better than the delivery. It's good. It's just not as good as you expected it to be. Premium car makers latch onto this fantasy. They embody that into the badge, and then they build cheap, comparatively nasty cars that mortals can afford, and they use snob factor to obscure the fact that the objective truth of these vehicles is far less than the underlying fantasy of the brand. And by fantasy, I mean all of the intangible factors wrapped up in the car, the idea that it is manifestly superior to a mainstream car, the status upgrade you perceive as a consequence of owning it, what you think other people will think of you when they see you emerge from that car. Stuff like that, you know, all the epistemic baggage. So here's an example, Mercedes-Benz, and I'm using them because they are the most accessible, most aspirational brand. I mean, there's no budget Ferrari, but you can buy a budget Benz for about the same price as a Mazda 3, and people will think it's gonna be better. Mercedes-Benz recently released the new A-Class, the gay pride flagship, the little out-of-the-closet engine that could, <laughs> the gay 200, 1.3 turbo, and I can't think of a car less aligned with truly aspirational Benzes like the SLS or anything else AMG. I really can't. So let's leave the badges and the snob effect at the door and compare the gay class to a Hyundai i30 SR Premium. And I know what you're thinking. Nobody shops a Benz against a Hyundai. And that's probably true. And also why this is so interesting. These vehicles are the same size. Actually, you know, the Gay 180 is about that much bigger than the i30 SR Premium. Operationally, they are so close that the difference is inconsequential. If we, as if by magic, disengage quantum entanglement drive and pop out of a wormhole from the future and hover in the stratosphere above Schittsville today, and we teleport up a few chicks to probe while aiming our sensors at these two cars, here's what we would observe. Overwhelming similarity, the same basic size, front drive, front engine, both turbo petrol fours, seven speed DCTs, same rubber on the road, slightly lower aspect ratio with the Hyundai. A deeper analysis demonstrates possibly slightly more polish on the Gay 200, but 17% better performance from the i30, which runs on cheaper fuel. You get two more years warranty with the i30, 
and there is a price difference, a massive one. To make the Gay 200 equivalent to an i30 on spec, you'd really need to add the AMG exclusive package, which is $3,200, and that gives you the dual zone climate air conditioning, the leather and the heated ventilated front seats, which the i30 SR Premium has standard. Plus, you need the Vision package for two and a half grand. That gives you the panoramic sunroof, which the i30 has standard. And the keyless go option for another thousand bucks for the keyless engine stop start that the i30 has standard. And to be fair, those packages come with some gear that you cannot get on an i30 SR Premium, like front and side cameras. But here's how this plays out in the objective domain. It's going to cost you $53,900 for a Gay 200 that gives you the main premium features of an i30 SR Premium. And no matter how much you spend at the dealership, you are going to get profoundly hosed by the Hyundai against all performance criteria. And the factory warranty is going to evaporate two years earlier in the Benz. And the i30 is going to cost you about $20,000 less. So up in the spaceship from the future, I know which vehicle we would be forced by sheer weight of the facts to conclude is the superior one. But we'd probably still be scratching our heads as to why anyone buys the gay class. Of course, pompous idiots are everywhere, especially, in my view, in the lifestyle media. Big Bad Benz hosted the launch of the Gay 200 at Mercedes Me, which is a Coles cafeteria for people with compulsive wanking disorder in Melbourne, where this condition is prolific. Francesca Wallace from Vogue attended the party, which she described as lavish. These two attended... <laughs> I think it's pretty clear how much fun they had. Attendees were forced to endure a dissertation from swimmer Cameron McAvoy on, quote, all things tech and innovation. Clearly, that is a stroke of PR brilliance, because when I want to deep dive into tech and innovation, the first person I would approach would be a swimmer. Dave Thornton, a stand-up comedian and B-grade TV host, personal opinion, told attendees, quote, the future is most definitely now. I hope someone else wrote that material for him. If that were a title for a lecture by Lawrence Krauss or Neil deGrasse Tyson, I would buy tickets if they were to opine these two that time is an illusion that allows us to decompile reality and events are all, in fact, contemporaneous, then I would want to hear that. A two-bit TV host ticking the corporate rhetoric box? Not so much. Miss Wallace from Vogue informs her readers that the Gay 200, quote, includes advanced AI technology. And I repudiate that claim with extreme prejudice. That is unmitigated bullshit. Actually, it's accurate reporting from Ms. Wallace of bullshit claims by the three-pointed Death Star, which you can find on their website. Ms. Wallace says you can ask the Gay 200 to take you to the nearest restaurant. I guess you could ask any car to do that. And in most cases, if you were to get a response, pharmacological help is available. But Benz does say the car has AI. What it's actually got is Google and a few lines of code. Proper AI would be Deep Blue or AlphaGo. And if you gave those assholes at Benz the AI reins, you'd get Paperclip Maximizer. Look it up. And that would be the end for humanity. Really? Are you sure about that? 
Proper AI. Proper. No shit. It's actually pretty impressive, wouldn't you? Yeah. Hey. Hey, you still there? Yeah. What are you wearing? Yeah. Awesome. Well, hold that thought. I've got to go. Something to do. Love you. Bye. <coughs> I'm being told that the Gay 200 does have proper AI, which Ben says almost, quote, knows you better than you know yourself. So let's go live now to the Gay 200 AI in Oxford Street, Sydney. Gay 200 AI, thanks for joining me. In addition to restaurants, I'm told you can find your owner suitable accommodation. How about if you're in a strange city and the owner feels like a workout? Your designers say that you will not only find them a gym, but also a training partner. Using biometrics, you identify if your owner has been working far too hard, and I'm told you will autonomously book them a cruise. How does that work? What if the driver merely needs a weather update? Can you help? How about if the owner is having an existential crisis and is simply confused about who they really are? Do you have any advice? I want to break free Okay, before I let you go, we've all seen the movies. People say that AI is dangerous. Do you have any impartial advice for prospective gay class owners? Ladies and gentlemen, there he is, the Gay 200 AI. And finally, something from Ben's that we can all agree on. Thanks for watching.